Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? How many are saying, I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord? And how many are expectant from God today? Just lift your hands and tell Jesus, I want something new from you today. I don't know how you came in today. You could have come today by coincidence, but by the virtue that you're here, this is a divine appointment for you from heaven. Praise the Lord. Father, I thank you. I declare that God, this is holy ground to God. And Lord, this is your hour that God, you're going to manifest and prevail. So I ask that God, let your spirit take charge. Let your Holy Ghost take control over every power and principality. And now I declare that God, this is your hour. Let your spirit prevail in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I want to have your seat as I want us also to honor the man of God, our bishop. I call him dad. He's more than a father. Praise the Lord. I know some of you might not know, but he, I grew up under his cover. And uh, what God has made me today is because I walked under his cover those many years when I was a young, young boy. Praise the Lord. And I'm so delighted. The first time I ever preached in this church was when the pulpit was on that other side. And it was a, it was a brown pulpit. So I remember I couldn't be seen because I was very short. So they had to put something for me to step up and I preached on a Wednesday. That was uh, where the ministry started. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Dad and Mom. I'm honored. And thank you for allowing me to come. Amen. I also want just to, I came with my family. Maybe they can just stand where they are. That's my wife. Or you can come. Just come so they can see you. Just come. When I left here, I left a young man, but I've come back home full, full packed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. So, I'll, so this is my wife. We serve with her in Deliverance Church under Reverend uh, Gerald Kimathi and uh, Lydia Kimathi. And uh, we both minister there as pastors in the church. Amen. Then my firstborn is Abigail. Abigail, she mourned when she left Cornerstone, but uh, I know she told me that she feels like now she's back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's Abigail Amor. Then the second born is Jonathan Jaquath. And then we have, um, I don't know whether to call him last born. I can call him the one now. He's, uh, he's called Ezekiel Janabi. Praise the Lord. Amen. Aumina, you can have a seat. Thank you. Praise the Lord. All right, I want us to go very quickly into the scripture, and let's read, let's start by reading Ephesians 1, 3. Let's start by reading Ephesians 1, 3. Ephesians 1, 3. I want us to read it together. We can see. Let's read together. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. In, in, praise the Lord. Let's go to verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And verse 5. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good will, the good pleasure of his will. Praise the Lord. I also want us to, our main text today is in the book of Numbers 23. We are just going to read um, a short part of it. Praise the Lord. And Numbers 23 from verse 1. And, uh, and if possible, we can, uh, let's go to the last verse of chapter 22 so that we can read something there. The last verse of chapter 22 before we go to verse 1. can read that for you. It says, in verse 41, so it was the next day that Balak took Balaam and brought him to the high places of Baal, that from there he might, now let's go to verse 1, and Balaam said unto, the, unto Balak, build 
me here seven altars and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Let's move on. Then Balaam said to Balak, stand by your burnt offering and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me. And whatever he shows me, I will tell you. So he went to a desolate height. And God met Balaam and said to him, I have prepared the seven altars and I have offered each altar, on each altar a bull and a ram. Then the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, return to Balak and thus you shall speak. So he returned to him, and there was, and, and, and there he was, he was standing by his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. He took up his oracle and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Haram, from the mountain of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? From the top of uh, from, the t uh, 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 f uh, f from the top of the rock I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There are people dwelling alone, reckoning itself among the nations. Praise the Lord. So I'm talking about restoration during crisis. And something that God has put in my heart today as I was listening to God and asking God, God, what do you want for your people? Because there's always what is Rema for the people of God. Amen. And God was putting in my heart today that this is a season for restoration for his people. And this restoration is not just a restoration that you're just going to feel. It's a restoration that is going to be evident. Praise the Lord. It's a restoration that is going to be evident. Now, most of the time, we value or, or we think sense to feel that what our body feels is what is happening in our lives. But there's something deeper than the body. The Bible says that man is, has three components. The spirit, the soul, and the body. Now, most of the time, we tend to analyze our lives with what is happening in the physical. Praise the Lord. With what is happening in the physical. Now, remember this. The, when, the first verse that you read, you said what? That God has given us Every spiritual blessing, praise the Lord. He did not say that I have given you or a person. He said he has given us, praise the Lord. So anything that is good comes from him. And it is not just for any one man, but for every child of God. Praise the Lord. So when God is saying that I'm coming to restore you, he's coming to restore you to every spiritual spiritual blessing that belongs to you. Praise the Lord. And something that I've come to know that it does not matter where you came from or how you are born or the circumstance in your life right now. That when the word of God comes, he comes to manifest and fulfill that which it was sent to accomplish. Praise the Lord. So Balaam, at this point in time, he was surrounded. The Bible says that he was taken to a high place where Baal was. And sometimes in our lives, we could be in a circumstance or a situation that has persisted for long. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have done everything that man can do, but nothing has changed. Today I have come to submit to you today. Something is going to change. It does not matter what is happening, but under this anointing, something must change. Praise the Lord. And so, he, he was surrounded in the high places of Baal. And that's what's happening to us. We are surrounded by everything uncouth. Everything that could bring destruction into your life. But listen to this. The Bible says, Balaam said unto him, Build me altars. As the Lord is restoring you, it does not matter which altars you are in. Or where you've come from. Whether there was witchcraft or, or any power that was dominating your life. Let me tell you today. You are going as God is restoring you to your place. You must raise an altar for God. Praise the Lord. 
he realized that because that was the high place amen that was the high place where the baal all the gods of baal were there he had to raise an altar for god when the lord is restoring you you must raise an altar let me tell you and and and, and most christians why we have persisted in the same place is because we don't know how to raise these altars for god for our restoration he put an altar and by the way the cost of that altar alone the, the bible says that he had to put seven bulls and uh, and, and a ram seven of them along the 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 seven altars let me tell you what happened that cost alone was around 2515 dollars that's around what kenya shillings 300000 just he raised an altar just because he knew that there are powers that were controlling that area praise the lord there are powers that have dominated your life but today you must purpose that you must raise an altar for god over that circumstance over that situation because something must change but you must make a purpose to raise an altar for god praise the lord so he raised an altar and listen to me when he raised an altar god responded to that altar praise the lord so as the lord is restoring you today there are some altars that you must bring down praise the lord some altars that you must bring down some of us we want god but also we want the world We want God but we want the world. We want God but we want the world. There are some altars that must die for God to be seen. Praise the Lord. Some must die. You've prayed, you've asked God for something, you've seen it has taken too long, you've decided to go and mix yourself. That is not God. God is God. He cannot be mixed. Some altars of pride must die. Some altars of, of of arrogance must die. If God is to be seen today, some altars that have been raised of sin must die. Praise the Lord. You know, when I I ask God, God, what do you want? Let me tell you, today today God is going to restore your life, but you have to make a choice. Remember, you must raise an altar. No one will raise it for you. Praise the Lord. You must raise an altar. for god in that family in that marriage over that pain over that circumstance over that situation you must raise an altar for god praise the lord and you know that altar you are raising for god must cost you something you must pay the price for it praise the lord you must pay the price for it don't just come to god and give him yesterday we were counseling a certain lady and i think we were with my wife she was my interpreter because i couldn't hear the language the other lady was speaking and as as we were talking i realized something so this lady she had been sold out by an auntie to devil worship and so this young girl has struggled for so many years with demonic oppression for so long and as you we were listening to her i remember some point i told my wife i couldn't hear what they, because they were talking different language and so I, so i told them hold because this lady when she was brought into this uh into devil worship through the auntie the auntie made put a sacrifice of a seed and that's why this girl's life has been destroyed for so long let me tell you we need to know that we are not waging against flesh and blood but against principalities If you are for God, be for God. If you are standing for Jesus, stand for Jesus. If God is to come and God is to be seen and God is to come and deliver your life, then you must stand in righteousness before God. Something must stand. Something must change. Praise the Lord. Something must change. Something has to happen. And so today you must pay a price for the altar you're raising for God. Pay a price for it. You want it from God, pay a price. This lady because she was brought on board 
through a covenant, she had to be raised through a covenant. Praise the Lord. And apparently when the mother came, the mother to this lady, because she knew how she had the background, she came ready to make a covenant before God because she knew. Praise the Lord. Today, if you are really tired with what is happening in your life, raise the altar. Pay the price for the altar. Praise the Lord. Pay the price. You know, we live in a dispensation where people want, but you don't want to go beyond. You want God, but you don't want to go beyond. Oh God, I love you. Oh God, I want, I, I want you. But you know what? How much do you love him? He says, those who love me, I know those who love me, and those who love me, they diligently seek me. Proverbs 8, 17. Praise the Lord. They diligently seek me. And when they seek me, verse 32, says what? And up to that five, that when they seek me, they find me. When they find me, they find life. And when you find life, you obtain favor. Praise the Lord. How much do you want God? How much for your restoration? How much do you want him? How much do you love him? Because if you love him, you will pay the price for the love. Praise the Lord. You will pay the price. You will go out of your way. You will go out of your way and get that which you want from God. We pray, oh God, give me favor. You can't ask him to forgive. But the Bible says what? That when you, when you love him, you seek him diligently. When you seek him diligently, you, you find him. When you find him, you obtain favor. So you become a walking favor. Where you are walking, you don't deserve to get a job. You get it. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, when I was in campus, I remember at some point, uh, I served in the Christian Union during a trimester. And I remember I told God, I am not going to look for a job. Because people were busy going for internship. When students, when, when, when I, I decided to serve, and I told God, I'm not going to do what? To look for, I'm not going for internship. My first job must be paid. With or without experience. Why? I was busy doing the work of God. There must be something that you are paying a price for in the house of God. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you, when the time came, when I went for the interview, I remember the person who was to interview me at that point in time was away. No, actually he was very busy. He was a GM. He was very busy. And because he was busy, he told the manager, interview that young man. Then the manager was busy. And then after one hour, I waited patiently. After one hour, when the GM called him, asked him, have you interviewed him? I think he got scared. He said, yes. And then he was asked, oh, you've interviewed him? Okay. So how is he? He's okay. He had not even known anything about me. Let me tell you, I had not even gone for any package. I didn't even know how to use those softwares. But because he said yes, it was no longer my problem. It was his problem to ensure that I learned. Let me tell you, today, you can make a covenant with God and declare and claim what is yours. Praise the Lord. Claim what is yours. One thing I've always said, when something is mine, in accordance to the word of God, don't give the devil a chance. Stand for what is yours. If God says you are healed, declare you are healed. If he says there's provision, stand with your provision. Nothing can take and pluck out what God has prepared for you. Praise the Lord. And he told him, after that, the Bible says this, and God met Balaam. Now listen. And the Lord put a word in Balaam. Now, sometimes when we are looking for restoration, most of us, we want to see tangible things. Is that true? Now let me tell you something today. Please listen. God told him, return. I have put my word in your mouth. If today you told someone that, what will they tell you? You are waiting for something tangible. Now let me tell you. As you get into your place of restoration, you must have persistent faith. Persistent faith. 
persistent faith. Now listen, uh, the, the, in, if you read Romans 11, verse 5, it says that the faith that we are looking for is not faith that is based on human wisdom, but it is faith that is based on the power of God. Verse 5 of Romans 11. It is faith that is based on the power of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So you get that in, in, in it should be 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2, 2 5. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2 5. It's faith that is based on the power of God. Let me tell you, today, when we will be speaking words, don't wait to feel. Don't wait to sense. Believe by faith that what shall be spoken in this elders today is your portion. You don't need to wait to see. You don't need to feel. You know and you know and you know that you have received. Praise the Lord. You know. No man needs to tell you that you are receiving. You know that you are receiving today. Let me tell you, even if, let me tell you, God sent you today specifically for an assignment which you must go out with. Praise the Lord. So in your restoration, after you have raised the altar and you have prepared the price for the altar, you must move in persistent faith. Faith that will not be shaken. Faith that will not be moved. Praise the Lord. You will not be moved. Let me tell you. So that now I'm to look up there. So I'm looking. Praise the Lord. And we have a lot to cover. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. When you want something from God, don't, don't go for mediocre. Don't go for anything less. I remember one day my wife told me that there was a time we were looking for something. And we didn't have money. And uh, she told me something, and I was amazed. She showed me, you, I know you. You will have to get it. Let me tell you, that's what happens. When I know something is mine, and I know in the spiritual, in the spiritual realm it is mine, it is that every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, I will not go for anything less. I go for what is mine. Praise the Lord. Don't go for anything less. As the Lord is restoring you, he's giving you what is yours. Praise the Lord. Go for what is yours. What do you want? What do you want from God in your restoration? What do you really perceive of God? What do you really want from God in your restoration? Go for it. I can tell you, we didn't have money. But, my dear, when, you, when we came home, you were shocked. Do you know what? Let me tell you something. I've always purposed in my heart. When I've seen it, I have it. Can you see it? You have it. In your restoration, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? As God is restoring you, what do you see? Do you still see yourself the same way you are? Or do you see yourself in the next dimension? Praise the Lord. As God is restoring you, you must be seeing something. What are you seeing? Don't see death. You cannot see death. If God is with you, he is the life-giving spirit. You must see life. Even though doctors could have told you it is an end to you, it is not an end because God is the life-giving spirit. Praise the Lord. He is life. So whatever you do, let there be life. There shall be no death. No premature deaths. No premature losses. Because you are a child of God. Praise the Lord. So you are going to persist in your faith. See it. Tell my neighbor, see it. You must start seeing what God has called you to be. Let me tell you, back in the years, I used to, you know me, I'd always desired God. I remember I used to come in church for prayers every morning. And I would come to pray. And I used to tell God, I would sit down, sit, and tell God, Father, I'm waiting to hear from you. And I gave God no chance. Actually, in Isaiah 62, he says what? Give him no rest until he does what? He makes Jerusalem a what? A center of praise. Your life must be a praise unto God. Today, as God is restoring you, you're not just going to be a mediocre man or a mediocre woman. There must be praise. 
given to God for what is going to happen in your life. Something must happen. Praise the Lord. Something must happen. Something must change. Whoever is holding your promotion cannot any longer today. Because today you are going to move out of here with persistent faith. You are going to move out of here seeing what you want. Seeing where you are going. Without favor. Without favor. Wa- wa- wavering. You know what God is doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so he went and spoke. And the Bible says what? That when he spoke, he told him, how can I curse whom God has not cast? How can I curse whom God has not cast? You could have been living in a scenario and you've seen yourself cast. Today, he has said what? Blessed be the God of our Father. Who has done what? Who has given us not one, but every spiritual blessing. So today, even if you've come from a home where there were curses, no curse can overcome you. Even if you've come where there are diseases, hereditary diseases, today, no disease can overcome you. Praise the Lord. You are turning the dimension of your family. You are turning the dimension of your life. Child of God, listen to me today. I am speaking out of the authority of the Holy Ghost. You are turning things around today. You are turning the shape of your life. You are turning things around today. Praise the Lord. The Bible says this. He told him, you cannot curse what God has blessed. You are blessed. You must be walking with God. You see on your forehead, it is written what? Blessed. Praise the Lord. You look at your forehead, it isn't what bless. When he said every spiritual blessing, it means you are a blessing. Where you walk, you are blessed. Even if there's kamote put somewhere, you are a blessing. Kamote or no kamote. Enemies or no enemies, you are blessed. You walk like a blessed man. Why? You are a child of God under the covenant. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Something something today is being transformed. So as you look at yourself, don't think that you are are hopeless. Who said you are hopeless? Tell me the word where it is written. For I know the good plans I have for you. Not bad plans. So if you came today thinking nothing good in my life happens, today it is happening. It is happening. Because God is turning your mindset. Your mindset is changing. You are seeing what God can do. Not what men. He says what? Our faith is not anchored on the wisdom of men. Not what men have told you. They told you you can't. You are telling them, I am walking under the power of God. Because to them who received him and believed him, he gave them power. Power to become children. So this faith you are walking in is under the power of God. Praise the Lord. Tell my neighbor, I am blessed. On my forehead is the blessing. Wherever I walk, I am blessed. Praise the Lord. You see, some of us, we ask God, oh, God, restore me. But to where? You see, you must know what you want. You must know what you want. What do you want God to do for you? Walk like a child who is blessed in accordance to what you see. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now listen. The Bible says this. That after this, Balak was very mad with Balaam. He was very mad. He told him, I took you to go and curse my enemies. But you have blessed them. Can I give you something today? Let me tell you something. Even if people will go against you, even if they will go against you in all manners, they cannot curse, they cannot destroy the life of a blessed man or a woman. Praise the Lord. They can't destroy. They can't. You will be in a matatu. An accident will happen. But because you are blessed with the seal of God, you cannot be touched. Not even your bone. You will come out. Any wickedness, any plan that has been thwarted in your life, that has been put ahead 
your life, it cannot overrule what God is doing today. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, God is looking for radical Christians who will believe the word as it is. Believe the word as it is. If it has happened in the word of God, it can happen to your life. Praise the Lord. It can happen. And so, Balak was very mad. And let me tell you something. You know, in every crisis, there are remnants. In every crisis, there are remnants. In every crisis, there are remnants. And you are a remnant. Now, let me tell you, I want us to read this. Let's look at Romans 11, 5. I want to tell you why you are a remnant. We can read from verse 1. Why are you a remnant? You know why you are a remnant? Let me tell you today the secret. They are remnants. Now, this story, we can start from verse 1. This story is in 1 Kings 19, uh, from verse 1 to 18. But I want us to bring it here, so that we see it at a different dimension. The Bible says, I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I am not an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people, whom he, for, whom he foreknew. Or do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleaded with God against Israel, saying, now listen, Lord, you have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am left alone. They seek my life. Now listen to what God, listen. But what does the divine response, but what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved, now listen, for myself, 7,000 men who have not bowed down to Baal. Hello? Now listen to verse 5. Let's read together that. Aha! They are remnant in according to the election of what? Grace. The Bible says in John 1.14 that Christ was full of what? He was full of grace and truth. No one it says that every spiritual blessing in Christ. That means what? There is grace for you to achieve every blessing irrespective of your nature or your circumstance. You are going to be a remnant in the crisis. Praise the Lord. Say, I am a remnant. I am a remnant. I am a remnant. Praise the Lord. The grace of God in Christ he is full of grace. And full of truth. That grace will make you a remnant in the crisis. Praise the Lord. You are not just going. But then let me tell you. No human being. No man can get you out of this earth. Because of the grace of God in your life. Praise the Lord. You are walking under the grace. In this crisis. You are walking under the grace. You are going to be a remnant. Corona or no corona, you will be a remnant. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, these remnants are those who are looking up to Jesus. They are saying, Jesus, I know there is a disease. I am a remnant. I know there is calamity. I am a remnant. I know I am in pain. I am a remnant. I know my marriage is in trouble. I am a remnant. Praise the Lord. You are a remnant. You, there will, even though Elijah will say, I, I'm thinking I am alone. You're not alone. There are many others that God is preparing under the grace in the crisis. Praise the Lord. So you will prevail. You will prevail. You will prevail in the circumstance. Praise the Lord. You will overcome. This crisis shall not overcome you. Whatever it is, it shall not overcome you. You will walk out stronger. But let me tell you, every crisis, have you seen in the Bible? Every crisis raised up a leader, raised up someone. Actually, during a crisis, there is demotion and there is promotion. Remnants are promoted. Remnants are promoted. Remnants are promoted. And you are a remnant. Praise the Lord. You are a remnant. You know, I, I remember at some point I had a very unique, I, I always thought, called him a good 
it used to be a unique boss in court. And that man, for so many years, stressed my life. And I remember I used to tell God, God, I am blessed. I used to walk like a man, knowing that he's blessed. You know what? A time came. He used to sit in a certain chair, and he would tell me, sit there. And he would talk. A day came. I was sitting where he's sitting. And he was sitting where I used to sit. That is God. That is what shall happen today. Every man, any woman, who has looked down upon you, who thought you could not make it, today, you are being elevated as a remnant. Praise the Lord. You are being elevated. Child of God, start seeing your elevation. Don't wait to feel it. Don't wait to feel as if it is happening. When God has said, remnants are promoted during crisis, that is your portion. Praise the Lord. Every crisis brings new people. Praise the Lord. The crisis brought Moses. And they knew him as a man of God. Praise the Lord. Daniel with the crisis, he was raised. Joseph with the crisis, he was raised. If God did it for them, he is the same God that is your God. Who will do it for you? Praise the Lord. Now let me tell you something. The Bible says this, that even after the first time when Balak was told that he can, that he could, that Balak could not cast what God has blessed. Do you know what? Balak was not yet done. Some of you, you've been going through circumstances, you have been praying, you feel like God is going to come. Then all of a sudden, round two. And you wonder, God, what has happened? Round two or no round three or round 20 does not matter. What God has said that you are, that is what you are. Praise the Lord. And so Barak went again and told him, again, he took him to another place, a different place. Tell him, roll him, hey. And, and but the Barak was very crafty. He knew. He, he would go and make another altar. Again, he would pay the price for it. And you know what? Again, God said, I cannot, what I have blessed cannot be cast. Let me tell you of God today, irrespective of the pain you'll go through in this life, you are an overcomer. He says what? But ye are of God and ye have overcome. Why? For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The word has already declared you are a child of God. You are an overcomer. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Today, start testifying. Give a testimony. Even if you've not seen it, say, I am becoming. Start prophesying into your life. Start declaring into your life what men cannot see, but you can see. Because every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. In the heavenly place. In Christ. And there is grace for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know what? Barak was not done. So you are wondering. God, I have prayed 20 years. It does not matter. Today is the day of the Lord. To my neighbor, neighbor. Today is the day of the Lord. And this is my day. Talk like you believe them. This is my day. I know it is my day. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places is mine. Let me tell you. When I speak something, I know it is done. I don't think twice. Today, you are blessed. You are blessed. Because the seal of God is upon you. You are blessed. You are not going to die. Don't wait for death. Wait for... You remember the story? The enemy, you will sit on the seat of the enemy. And the enemy will be there to look at you. And do you know what? You will not revenge. Hello? You will not revenge. Actually, you will tell them, Hey, can I serve you some tea? Praise the Lord. You will, you know what? For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Don't 
do things in the flesh. You are wrestling in the spiritual realm. You'll make the enemy know that God is truly love. Praise the Lord. Balak was not yet done. Round three. Tell my neighbor round three. And now do you know what? At this point, Balaam said, enough is enough. Today, you must get tired of your circumstance. You must get tired of your situation and say today, enough is enough. There is the further you can go. Today is enough. No more. But at this point, Balaam said, I am not even going to ask of God. And now guess what? Do you know what the Bible says? Because he refused to go and ask God again, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Today, as the Lord is restoring you, he's releasing his spirit upon you. A freshness of the spirit. A fresh fragrance of the spirit. The spirit will give you new strength. The spirit of God will give you new guidance. He will guide your path. He will guide you. He is restoring new strength to your weak body. He is giving new strength to your bones. He is God. He is doing it. And you know what? I love what the Bible says. Because the Bible says this. That after this, Barak gave and spoke some things that God was doing upon Israel. He said, you are like the vast spreading valleys, beautiful gardens, trees by the river, a fragrant tree of God's planting. Hello? That's your portion. That's your portion. You will sprout again. You will sprout again. You will sprout again. You will sprout again. You will blossom. Praise the Lord. I don't know what the devil has done in your life, but today is, is enough. Today, enough is enough. Something is happening. Something is being changed. I want to give you a final thing before we pray. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me. What your body feels in the crisis does not determine your future. The Bible says what? For the spirit man, though the outward man decays, the spirit man is being what? Renewed. Today, irrespective of what your body is feeling, your spirit man today, remember, the spirit of God came upon Balaam. God's spirit is coming upon you this evening. And when the spirit of God comes upon you, it does not matter what the body is saying. It is what the spirit is saying. You know, the spirit man connects with the spirit of God. And so anything that is happening to the body first begins with the spiritual man. Praise the Lord. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, he turns you around. So you might not see it now, but yes, it is. Praise the Lord. And watch out the enemy who comes to fight your soul. Who comes to fight your mind. Who comes to destroy that what you have had today may go out and, 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 and may come in and go out. That is not your portion. Because today, God is taking charge of your soul. Every mind of yours. Every emotion. Every part of your will. Today you will have the will to live. You will have the will to make it. You will have the will for success. You will have the will to make it in this life. God has come. And God is doing it. God is doing it. A seal of blessing is upon you. I want us to rise up. A seal of blessing is upon you. This crisis will not finish you. Good and beautiful are your tents and your tabernacles. That will, that will, that will be a testimony. They'll be saying how beautiful you look. How wonderful your tabernacle looks. How wonderful your life looks. Because that is your portion. Praise the Lord. His king shall be higher than Agog. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you something. The same God. You know there are some circumstances that are very hard. You know that. But let me tell you. The same God 
who made Abimelech in Genesis 20 to get the dream and release Abraham. The same God is with you. Every tough circumstance. Verse 7 of Genesis 20 says what? And Abimelech did what? Restored unto Abraham, his wife. Praise the Lord. Every Abimelech in your life, today, you are going to be restored. What is yours is being restored. It says in Jeremiah 30, 17, I will restore your health. Psalms 51 says, I will restore the joy of your salvation. That is what God is doing today. I want to look for men and women who are saying, God, it does not matter what has happened. I have heard the word. And I know right now, something is happening. Come on, lift your hands unto God. And start declaring things that are not. Zakobo Zarabandros. Zanamo Zakarabayangrata. Bosa Karabayangros. Yetanama Zakarabayandros. Come on, declare it. Every spiritual blessing. No crisis shall overcome you. And there is a sweet anointing in this sanctuary. There is. Come on, just lift your hands in the atmosphere. Come and lay down. Come and lay down. The bar.